Okay, this piece is titled for the whole exhibition, Connected Presence, and it's a collaborative piece done for both Nancy and myself. And um, we had a great, great fun doing it because we kept switching our pieces back and forth. So I'd start a piece and give it to Nancy, and she'd start a piece and give it to me. And we'd trade back and forth until we said, Fini. Yeah, and if there was anything left we thought was unresolved, we would agree on what that might be and who would do it. Okay. And then that was it. <laughs> so how long, how long it took you to finish the piece? Oh, well, we did it over 2020, during the year. Yeah, during the year of 2020. And, yeah. and because, you know, 2020 was not a very sociable year, um, we could take our time, you know. And um, as I said, we were doing it in our individual homes, and we'd get together and we'd swap and send pictures back and forth to each other. We, did, we didn't feel rushed, which was interesting, so yeah, we could both be working on our other work, but also have this on, on, on the go. Yeah. And before we did this piece, we did um, our wire tree series, and there are three wire trees here that um, you might see later in the, in the video. Yeah. <laughs> so, talking about this show, um, how the title came about? Why, why is? Well, we, we um, for various reasons, because um, both of us work um, from a sense of being, wanting to be present, wanting to be present in nature, wanting to be present with the people that we're with, and wanting to be present in the creation of our work. And Nancy and I feel a strong friendship connection. Yeah, and this was a perfect example of being having to be present but connected. And have a friendship in order to work together. <laughs> and, and leave our egos at the door. Yeah. yeah. That's very important for collaborative work. Yeah. Yeah. It is because we're so different in our own individual work, our every part and in every way really. Um, so it's such a challenge to let that go and find something else mm -hmm. in order to be, be able to really say honestly we work collaboratively. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and for you, Mary, the inspiration for your pieces? Um, really nature, if, for this particular series. Um, I was very fortunate um, in 2019, the latter part of 2019, um, my husband and I traveled to Eastern Canada and we went to Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, Ontario, New Brunswick. And I'd never been to part of that part of the world before. And we were there for almost, well, two and a half months. And I'd never seen the colors that were in, in the autumn there. And I hadn't intended to come back and paint with so much color. But you, you were so bombarded, or I was, because it was new to me, bombarded by those colors, that they've affected everything I've done since the trip. I can't seem to stay away from colors that you could eat. So, so my observation of her, she would say before each painting, I quote, I want this to be grayed down, calmer. <laughs> And I watch her paint and make her choice. I'm thinking, but it's not that way. <laughs> no way, no how. You've got this gelato palette <laughs> that is all the more gelato with the neutral sitter in it. But it was so interesting to watch her go between almost what she should do, but what she really was responding to. But I respond to the times of day, the seasons, seasons yeah. a great deal. Um, I don't know whether it's part of you know the physical clock for everybody, but you respond to daylight savings time. You you respond to the the phases of the moon, um, and and obviously the seasons. And even though the palette is very similar, it seems to speak to those seasons. Yeah, you're um, you know, in, in some way. So it's interesting, someone just commented on your work 
this afternoon and said, what she sees is light. Light's a big so, deal. So that was interesting I'm, to yeah. me, you know, and that's... Yeah. My yeah. eyesight not being all that acute, I, I am affected by light, shadow, sure. reflection, and refraction. So it, it would be pretty odd for it not to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nancy's work. <laughs> yes, now yes. Oh, on the other so, hand. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand. Yeah, well, obviously nature as well, but it's not just that. So I just love the characters of birds. They're metaf I can use them as a story, metaphor. Um, there's so much movement and sound in them, and music has always been a part of my life. So the combination of those two, so to use those musical elements as collage into the actual bird and tree images mm -hmm. um, just was a natural thing for my, for my story. And someone just told me that they can see children's books in my work, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, you're yeah. a storyteller. I am. So um, where you see so much color shape in Mary Ellen's work, my, mine is more about the detail and the actual little story of... Um, whatever the viewer sees, but for me, yeah, it's these relationships of the birds. Yeah. It's also about what, she doesn't tell everything, but it can be about where have these birds come from or where are they going? What did they yeah. just see or experience? Yeah. And I think, I think it's, it's the story that you fill in yeah. as a viewer that's not necessarily all there. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, as different as mine is from Mary Ellen's, I'm really affected. I live, at the, I live on Dallas Road. I live at, looking over the Strait of Juan de Fuca in the mountains. I'm very affected by the seasons and the times of day, the, the quality of the light, the colors. And I don't paint the landscape, although there are trees and that. I'm not a landscape painter. But the palette will be winter, spring, summer, evening, those kind of things. So I find that it's an indirect influence on my work.